welcome to this episode of HealthWise 360, a creation of Clarissa Burt, founder of In the Limelight Media. I'm your show host, Chrissy Accordingly. You'll be able to see this interview on In the Limelight TV, which is distributed on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and a hundred other smart TV apps. The audio version of this interview can be heard wherever you listen to your podcasts. And today I'm really excited to be interviewing Dr. Craig Hogan, who is the president and co-founder of the Afterlife Research and Education Institute and co-founder of Seek Reality Online. Craig has been studying and writing about consciousness, the life after this life, and afterlife communication for 30 years. He is the author, co-author, and editor of eight books on the subject. <laughs> Craig has remote viewing abilities and teaches people how to open to their abilities and messages from loved ones in the afterlife. He's most recently partnered with attorney Roberta Grimes to create a new resource called Seek Reality Online that's intended to teach people, especially baby boomers and the silent generation, that we are spiritual beings having a brief physical experience. We have designed the resource to be similar to YouTube with a broad range of up-to-the-minute articles about this life, consciousness, the afterlife, and afterlife communication. So welcome to the show, Dr. Hogan. So excited to have you on. Well, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I'm anxious to talk with you about what we know about the life after this life and about life to life communication. Awesome. It's amazing. I love mm -hmm. actually that you you don't call it death, but you call it the transition. So can you share what the transition is and maybe what the stages of transition are? Sure, Chrissy. There is no death and there are no dead. So the, there is a transition. So we change focus. It's rather like we were looking at a waterfall and we turned around and we looked at a mountain and we're just changing focus. That's all it is. So then we change focus from this realm into the next realm. This realm we call Earth School. Yes. So what we're doing in this realm is we're learning lessons. We're growing in love and compassion and we're just having a lot of fun. And that's what this realm is all about. And then when we're done in this realm, we, something has to happen. So we just let the body go and it just goes off on its own and falls down and, and uh, it deteriorates. And uh, we leave the body and we go on to the next realm of life. And the next realm of life is very much like this realm, but it is much, much better. And it is a wonderful time. And so it is a transition. We have a transition from this life to the next life. There is no death. There are no dead. There is a death of the body, but not of us. We never die. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. find that really comforting, actually. I remember mm -hmm. once speaking to a um, a yogi, and he had said once that he had reached a state where he could see the next realm, and it was like it was like being in a dream that you wish you could hang on to. Like he mm -hmm. was so sad to wake up from it, but but everything in its time and place. So mm -hmm. people that experience near-death experiences, do they get a taste of what the transition will be, or is that a different process altogether? It's a different process. It is a taste of the greater reality. Now, what that means is we're actually in rather like a wormhole where we can only see a very small space in front of us. And we don't see the whole reality. We don't see the greater reality that there is. And it's a wonderful reality. It's full of love and comfort. And that's what the NDE people say that they, when they come back, that they experienced. Mm -hmm. So when we go into a near-death experience, it shuts down the physical realm. And that's the important part of it. And it could shut down for all kinds of reasons. We can shut it down in meditation. We can shut it down in other ways. But the strongest, the heaviest shutdown is when a person is near death and the, their, their brain waves are not working anymore. They're not seeing brain waves. The heart is not pumping blood. And so they are just about dead. They are just about in that state in which they are going to be leaving the earth plane. And so then when we get into that state, then the whole world, the universe opens up to us. We have many, many things that are outside of us that we could tap into if we if we wanted to. I can tap into them using remote viewing. I can sit in my office in Illinois. I, I can look at something on somebody's table in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And so then we, we have all of this available to us. We get a taste of it when we go into a near-death experience because we're shutting down the body. Once you shut down the body, you're going into the real world. We're going into the world that, that is really our home. And then so we get a taste of it when we have a near-death experience and we get the, the feeling we, of, of the comfort, the wonderful warmth of that being that everybody sees when they have a near-death experience. So we have that. But it is different from a death experience. 
because uh, it has a different transition, different process, different results, and in near-death experience, that's still part of Earth school. So the person is learning, and the death, near-death experience is part of their learning. It's teaching them things. Some people learn to be afraid of, of things, and other people learn that they can change their life. They can be what they want it to be. So it happens differently for different people because of the fact that we're going to come back. They're going to come back and they're going to use that. It's going to make a difference in their lives. But in a death experience, then we go on to the other side. And there are many things that happen when we go on to the other side, the transition. We know about all of it now. And we know about it because we're getting messages coming back from the people who made it. And they've gone through it and they've come back and tell us what it was like. Mm -hmm. to go through the, the transition it's a wonderful transition there's nothing to be afraid of no no I was saying to you just before we started recording it's interesting you said that these experiences are something that we can learn from your death experiences because last year I sort of experienced one from an acute unexpected illness that happened after a very hard time in life and mm -hmm. at the time I remember wondering is life even for me anymore but when that mm -hmm. happened, I learned that I, I wasn't done yet. There were things still here that I needed to finish. I wasn't quite at peace with letting go of this experience. So yes. I think that was the lesson in all of that, which is pretty interesting that you mentioned that. So thank you for sharing yeah. with me. That is the lesson. And we all have exit points. Yes. So when we, our lives are planned, we had a pre-birth planning process. Our souls, our guides, higher level beings who are interested in us come together and they plan our lives. Now, they don't plan it minute by minute. We have free will. We can do what we want to do, but they plan it broadly. Who are the, What is the family we're going to be coming into? What's their economic status going to be? What talents are we going to have? So we do that broadly. And, and among those, then, we have exit points. There usually is more than one. And so if we have fulfilled what we're trying to do here on Earth, then we can make maybe take the first exit point. But if we don't, then we'll go on to the next exit point. And then when it's time, when when our time, we have finished what we came here to do, then we leave. That includes children, which sounds awful. But they when the child does transition to the next life, they haven't died. They're not they're not gone. They're still here. They're still with us. And we're gonna have a wonderful reunion when we get together and we're gonna share stories. But their time is finished. They had done what they needed to do. And when they what they're doing, they could have been doing things for themselves in their own growth, or they could have been doing something for another family member in our soul group, or they could be doing something for humanity. And they finished their time and they're, now they're going on. So nobody needs to feel guilty if the, their child passes away that that they should have done something different and and they should have been checking on them and they shouldn't have allowed them to go in that car and it doesn't make any difference when they come to the exit point it is going to happen there's no need to feel any guilt about it yeah that, that would be a very complex grief is so mm -hmm. complex right yes. but i guess that's part of the human experience too right that's right you're gonna that's experience right. extraordinary love which comes with grief and the, the other side mm -hmm. of that uh, you yeah. mentioned being able to see other places that you're not physically in. Is that astral projection or is that something different or is that it's, a similar concept? It's called remote viewing. And the CIA actually had a remote viewing program where they were spying on, at the time, the Soviet Union. Oh, wow. And so then they had uh, they had people that were military people and they taught them how to do remote viewing. What happens in remote viewing is... You sit quietly and you shut down the physical realm. That's where you get into the greater reality. Shut down the physical realm, go into a meditation. And as you're in the meditation, then you focus upon something. I've had a, a man in New Jersey uh, do remote viewing with me. And what he did was he put something on a table in his office. Mm -hmm. and I just re relaxed and I said, I want to see what's on the table in Bill Walker's office in New Jersey. That's all I need to do. And then after a little bit, then then I'll get pictures that will start to come to me. They're just usually parts of the picture. They're not the whole picture. And so I'll be getting those, and then I'll sketch them out, and I'll send them to whoever it is that I'm doing it for. And in Bill Walker's case, then uh, I was remote viewing things that were in his office, and I didn't get the target the first time. I didn't get what he put on the table. What I got was a, a green banker's light. You've seen those those oh, lights green. And so I saw one of those, and I told him that it was there. And he said, yeah, that was beside it, but that wasn't it. Mm -hmm. And then he went home that evening, and he took a look at my sketches, and he found out that what I was doing is I was remote viewing things in his house. 
Mm. So the sketches matched things that were on his tables in his house, and they matched perfectly. So that's what I was doing. So my <laughs> mind then just decided it was going to take a tour on Bill Walker's house, and, and so I did so. But anybody has this ability. We teach remote viewing. So it's a very common ability, and many people have this ability, and we do teach it. And what it shows is the fact that our mind is not in the brain. That's the important thing. We couldn't be seeing those things. It's not astral travel. It's the fact that there is no geography. There is no space between us. Mm -hmm. And so if we just close our eyes and concentrate on something, it can be in a, a different time. It can be in the past. It can be in the future. It could be somewhere else in the universe. And when we focus on it, when we shut down the physical realm, then the images will come to us. And, and in addition, sounds. You know, I get mm -hmm. sounds, I get feelings, like, like it's cold or uh, crunching of, of gravel underneath my feet. And so we get these and then we describe them to the person who sent that to us. And they said, yep, sure enough, there, here's, here's the picture. That's what it was. <laughs> it's amazing. I have a friend who has the ability to remote view and he calls it traveling by threads. And I think you meant mm -hmm. you talk about filaments, which would be a similar concept. Can you explain mm -hmm. what the silver thread is or the silver filament? There's a silver cord, and we have actually seen it. The silver cord attaches the body to the person's etheric body. Etheric body is a, a parallel body. It's a similar body to what we have. It's identical body to what we have in the physical. But it's etheric, meaning that it's outside and it's in the greater reality. And when we separate then from the physical body, then the etheric body is still there. The etheric body is what we then convey we we can walk around on the earth plane after we transition off and we can and people have told stories about riding in elevators and riding in buses and they're unseen if you saw the movie ghost mm -hmm. you know it's very much like that when patrick swayze was walking around and trying to contact his, his love and, and going through whoopi goldberg and, and he was there and the things were happening around him and he was touching things and riding on things but he was not seen he was not using the body. So what happens is that in astral travel, we actually have that silver cord that's connected to our body. And the silver cord, then, then we can go off in astral travel and we can go to other locations, go to somebody else's house, and we can look in on them. And we've had experiments in which they've done astral travel and they've had a psychic in the house without telling the psychic what was going to be going on. They just said, what do you pick up when you're in this house? The person doing the astral traveling who was asleep far away from that person in the house then went to the house and was there and the psychic then reported oh yeah you know i i had this real impression of it being here and he was wearing this white shirt and it was rolled up at the sleeves and it turns out all those things were exactly what he was wearing when he was in uh, asleep in that other location so we that's astral travel but in remote viewing there is no space, there is no geography. There, this is all just for us to be able to do things in the earth plane. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we can close our eyes and we can be there. I mean, we can just see whatever's there. It's just an experience that we have. So that's the difference between remote viewing and astral travel. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. A topic that you talk about often is uh, compassion for those that are transitioned, but maybe their body is still alive, you know, maybe, you know, still on medical assistance, as an example, someone in a coma, um, you use the phrase illusion of compassion that keeps them alive. So can you tell us what that is? And family and friends that are with someone when they are in transition, what would they experience? Well, when someone is, is going through the transition, then we do have a tendency to feel like we we feel sorry for them. We feel bad for them. Their body may be jerking. They may be having some difficulties and obviously in pain. All those things are happening to the body. They are not happening to the person. Mm -hmm. Pain is entirely in the mind. It's entirely our, our understanding of our, our feeling about it that's in the mind. It isn't in the body. We don't feel pain in the body. We feel it in our mind. So... I know that I have a pain in my finger, but my finger is not feeling the pain. My mind is feeling the pain. So what happens is then when we are in a, a coma, uh, it, we're jerking in because we're having uh, convulsions of some sort. The mind is not there. The mind has gone on to that next realm of life. They've already made the transition. And so then the, even though it looks like the person's in pain, it looks like awful things are happening to the body, if they're not alert and they're not saying things to people around them, they're already there. They're already into the next life and you don't have to worry about them. 
for all of us, though, there is no pain at the transition. They say that on the other side when they come back to us repeatedly. Mm -hmm. So that, for instance, there, there's one story that a, a man named Swain told from the other side. He's describing this, living in the other side. And he describes his own passing. And he says they were he was driving down a road with his fiance's sister. And all of a sudden, there was blinding light in front of them. It was a, a truck that was coming towards them. And they knew the truck was going to hit them. But then after that, they didn't remember anything about the truck. What happened was they then rose up out of the car. They were 30 feet above the car when he was holding his fiance's sister's hand. Mm -hmm. And they saw the, the collision happen below them. They were taken out of it before the collision happened. And many, many, many reports are of the same thing. We don't feel the pain at the passing. Uh, in a near-death experience, you feel lots of pain because you're going to come back. Mm -hmm. So that's really different. That's, that's a different circumstance. But when we go through the, the transition, there is never any pain. Nobody needs to worry about their loved one being in pain if they're, if they're lying there and, and they're completely unconscious, but, but their body's jerking or you can see that they're, they're, they're feeling pain. That's the body feeling pain. It is not the individual. The individual has already gone on to the next life. Mm -hmm. And then for people that are surrounding their loved one as they transition, do they feel mm -hmm. them? Like, do they, can they sense them? Feel like what happens to the people that are around physically when you transition? People who are around the person who's making the transition can very often have a, a shared death experience. In a shared death experience, you actually feel the same things that the person is feeling. You are actually go with them. One person reported that that uh, as he, his loved one was leaving, he rose up out of the body with the loved one and actually rose mentally, rose with the loved one. And then the loved one said, you have to stay here. You can't come with me. You have to stay here. So what happens is there's a, very often a shared death experience in which the person who is there sees something and, and ex experiences something. Another woman said that, that uh, they, when their loved one was just making the transition, there was a bright light in the room. And the people who were in the room looked at each other. They all saw the light. It was a, a, a flash of light. And it was because of the fact that the person was making the transition. And that was the opening up of the next life. And, and there's wonderful, beautiful things that are happening in the next life. Many people see the next life before they make the transition. Mm -hmm. So for instance, Steve Jobs, when he was about to make his transition, he was laying back and, and his his wife was there and his children were there. And he just said, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, because he was seeing what was coming up next. And it's a, a beautiful vision. So that's what happens. They can have a shared experience during that time, or they can have something happen in the room, or they can the person will describe what's going on. They're saying they're seeing the things happening that are going to be coming for them. Mm -hmm. Well, that. Um, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about Seek Reality, your new venture. Seek Reality is developed with attorney Roberta Grimes. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people to understand this. This is a wonderful message. The religions don't have the message. They have lost the message long ago. Jesus came and gave us the message. Then the church lost it. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring this message to humanity, to everyone, the individual that we don't need to fear the transition at the end of this life. It's just a change, like a going from childhood into adolescence or adolescence into a young adulthood. That's all it is. We know that our loved ones are there, are they accessible to them? We can communicate with them. They're looking in on us. They're spending time with us. When there's a celebration, an anniversary, they're there in our midst with us. And we just have to become attuned to that. We just have to understand that they are here. And, and that we can communicate with them uh, anytime that we want. So then the important thing is the fact that this transition is not something to be afraid of. Mm. It's a transition. We have a wonderful life with our with our family afterwards. And it's just like we walked out of a theater and then we can talk about the show that we just saw. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I really like that perspective. Mm -hmm. I was um I know for myself, and I don't know dreaming seems to be a state where you're more prone to 
uh, I guess, connect with people that have crossed over. Because I feel like there are many mornings where I wake up and I'm like, oh, I had such a great visit with grandma or whoever mm -hmm. that is no longer here. And it feels so real. Is that is that because you're in that relaxed state, like you're not so much tied to your body that it's easier to connect? Right. That's what's going on. It's called a hypnagogic state when you're between sleep and, and waking, especially in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a hypnagogic state, that means that your mind is active, but your body is shut down. You're, you're no longer focused on the physical realm because you're in this half sleep. And so when you're in that state, then all of the, the universe then can come through to you. Uh, these situations where we can remote view things, we can see things across the continent from where we are. We can see things that are happening in the future. I can do uh, precognition. I can see the future by using this remote viewing technique. We can see the past. We can see somebody else's past. All of these things are accessible. The whole universe is accessible to us. So what happens is then when we relax the body in any way, such as in a dream, such as a hypnagogic state, when we're just waking up, that allows us to go into our true home, what, where we really are living, which is this greater reality that's outside of us. And so it opens up the whole universe to us. And then uh, that means that our loved ones then can come in. They're, we've relaxed enough that they can come in and they can uh, have communication with us. They can sing to us. They can, uh, they can bring songs to mind that we used to love together and other ways that they can communicate with us. But it's because we're in that relaxed state. And we can go into that relaxed state anytime we want. We just sit down and meditate. Meditation mm -hmm. is a wonderful tool for connecting with the, our loved ones in the next realm of life. And anybody can learn how to do it. We have an, a free online training program, and it's free at, uh, at afterlifeinstitute.org slash self-guided. And what happens is that we teach people how to go into that state of mind by, through self-hypnosis. Anybody can do it. The whole universe is open to us. All we have to do is relax and go into it. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. a just a quick question, because sometimes people, especially where you mentioned religion, sometimes people think that there's a good and an evil side to the other side that that mm -hmm. you could connect with something that has the wrong intentions for us. Is that actually a thing, or are we sort of above all that? No, we're not. That that is there is actually a thing. There are uh, all kinds of beings that are intertwined with our reality, mm. and some of them are earthbound. That means that they left the body behind, but they don't want to leave the, this earth plane. So they stay on the earth plane, but they're just not in a body. And uh, sometimes they get very frustrated because they can't get people to see them. They can't get reactions out of people, and so they'll do things like they'll throw dishes across the room or something like that. So those are those are called earthbounds, and they become poltergeists. Polter mean, meaning mischievous, and geist meaning ghosts, mischievous ghosts. So then they can become poltergeists. But there are also entities that are thought forms that are are not that are bent upon doing evil. They are bent upon making difficulty for for humankind. And so we know that these thought forms are out there. They would they do not like the fact that we are becoming more attuned to our lives after this life, that we are becoming more loving and compassionate because they have a survival instinct. They're going to go away, you know, when and when the world is full of love and compassion, they won't be there anymore. But we do have those entities that that are part of uh, what we can experience. We are above that. If we're communicating with our loved ones, we are spiritually above them. In other words, they are not going to have an effect upon us. We never have some some demon come through and communicate with us instead of our loved one. You know, there's some superstition about that. Mm -hmm. That absolutely does not happen. Anytime you want to communicate with your loved one, you're on a higher spiritual level, uh, and nobody's going to bother you. They are not going to bother you because you're dull. You know, that's no fun. You know, you're just trying to communicate to grandma. We don't care about that because we're evil entities and we want to do some evil stuff. Yeah. So we got to find somebody else. And so we don't have to have any any worry about them. We will not have an evil entity come in when we're trying to communicate with our loved ones. That's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any other words of wisdom or peace or reassurance that you'd like to leave the audience with before we wrap up for today? Absolutely. Everyone just needs to know that we are just in a temporary state here. We're just in earth school and we're going to be here for a while. And then after that, we're going to transition 
into our next stage of life. And it's a wonderful life, the next life that we're going to be in. And we'll be there with all of our loved ones and all of our pets. And everybody is going to be there. We are not, nobody is, quote, lost. I didn't lose my grandmother. You know, it's uh, that is not what happens. They just make a transition. And, and then it's like they got on a plane and they moved to this other country. And they're living there now. And they're waiting for us to come, waiting for us to arrive. But they, we don't need to worry about them. They are fine, and they are just in a different place. And we're going to be with them pretty soon, and we can communicate with them. So we can get on the. It's like getting on the phone. All that we have to do to do that is to relax, focus on them, and let the the inspirations come, and they will be able to communicate with us. So what I want to say to people is. Don't fear death. There's nothing to fear about death. Be assured you are going to have a wonderful life after this life with all of your loved ones and know that you can communicate with them now. That's beautiful. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Dr. Mm -hmm. Sure.